Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Melissa, and for today's video, we are going to be repotting my extremely long string of hearts. <laughs> I just want to repot it, get it into a better mix, a better pot, and I think I'm going to take some cuttings at the end to propagate, to fill out this pot, to add back in. I haven't decided exactly what I want to do for this video. I just know that I want to repot it and take care of it because it's tangled and it's driving me crazy and I want to get it fixed. I actually started this from such a tiny plant, you guys. I have propagated this and cut it many times to fill it out. And it is very, very long. I should have taken a picture of it or put it, you know, filmed it before I took it down. It's been happy, but I feel like I want to get it into a more shallow pot. I just wanna like fill it out a little bit more cause it is pretty sparse still on top. I did add like several cuttings in probably, oh, I don't know, like late fall last year and they, they have grown quite a bit. I do have another one of these pots I'm gonna be using. Unfortunately, Target does not have these anymore. Maybe they will bring them back for the spring season, but this is a perfect shallow pot for these plants. My pot, for example, here, a little bit deeper than I would like for these plants because it can hold on to water more depending on your mix and the roots are pretty shallow. So sometimes a pot this deep, it can potentially like cause more harm to your plant just because it may not dry out as much and your soil could sit wet for longer. It really just depends, but I just wanna get it into the shallow pot. It's terracotta, so it will help wick away any moisture. And I'm gonna be using a very aerated chunky mix for this repot, which this plant is going to love. I repotted my string of pearls and my string of turtles in two separate videos on my channel and I can maybe link those up here for you. I repotted both of those into this mix and they are thriving and they love it. So I want to use this mix for these plants. I did get a new bag. This is by Soul Soils and it's their house plant mix, which is perfect for these plants. I do have a code with them if you do want to try this mix out. I honestly do love it. It does, you know, retain some moisture because it does have cocoa core and some Lekka balls, which do help retain moisture, so it's not going to be so drying. I just feel like these succulent type plants would really benefit from using a mix like this because it is so chunky and airy and you know you you don't risk like over watering these type of plants this hanger is stuck around this plant because i had it hanging with this which now that it's all tangled i'm probably i don't know how i'm going to get this thing out of here i honestly don't know what i was thinking using this for this plant really because it is now like entangled around my string of hearts this is not good <laughs> not good at all and I don't wanna untangle my string of hearts until after I repot it because I feel like it's gonna get even tangled again. What do I do now? <laughs> I think I'm gonna cut this. I don't wanna risk damaging my string of hearts. I'll just sew it back on, right? That's okay. I'm gonna cut it. Gotta cut it. Only way to save my string of hearts. <laughs> so I have a little tray here. I'm just going to dump out this old soil. So yeah, I repotted this last, last fall. I did propagate and take cuttings at that point. I have several reels on my Instagram that shows like how I propagate using the butterfly method. See, this soil wasn't even, you see how much extra soil is in here? And so the bottom of this is still really wet. So I did give my string of hearts recently a good drink just because of like pests that I had. This mix is sitting way too wet and these roots are not long enough to go in that deep of a pot. So I'm glad I'm getting this plant into a more shallow pot. I didn't really wanna mess with the root system too much. If you see the little like potatoes in your plant, they're just like little tubers and they can have aerial tubers as well. I actually think I might soil prop some cuttings and I might do some in moss and do the butterfly method just so I can show you guys what they look like. All right, so I have all the root system uncovered. So I have my pot. I'm going to open up this bag. I 
have about that much in there. Then I'm just gonna take my clump here and just sit it right down on top. It's okay if some of the leaves and stuff get buried underneath the soil. I mean, they could root into the soil on their own and like grow a little bit more, but I'm kind of just centering it and then I'm gonna fill up around and then I will work on untangling this plant and take some cuttings. My battery died a little bit. Before I finish filling up around, I'm gonna be using my slow release Osmico in here. I don't know, this isn't even like a fourth, a fourth a capsule maybe. And this slow, slow release fertilizer is good for six months. Mix that in a little bit. up on top a little bit more. It looks so good already. This plant is going to be so much happier. I can already tell. I'm thinking about cutting this in half, you guys. Or like where these lower ones in, I'm thinking about maybe cutting here. And I would have all this to propagate. It's done. <laughs> So this is what I've chopped here. So before I untangle this, I do want to add a few strands. I might do a couple like two leaf sections just so it's not so long. So I don't have like so much dead space in between, you know? Probably every, I don't know, like maybe every four to five days, I'm just gonna take my pump sprayer and then just like miss the top layer. It's not gonna like water the plant, but it's gonna keep the top layer a little bit moist so that all these like individual cuttings that I lay, lay in here will root down into the soil and that way they can grow and fill the pot out that way. These are all the cuttings that I took that I'm going to put in here. Oh, the camera's going to focus, there we go. Now I need to unbury some of this soil that I put in here so I can put these strings in because I want to bury them in the soil a little bit. So I will probably do some like in like a circle. So I'll take a couple of these at a time and I'm just going to kind of bury them down into the soil. I just want to make sure like the nodes are covered. And it's okay if the leaves get buried, like they'll eventually grow new leaves, you know. So I'm gonna do some on this side as well. Take a section and bury those down in here. And some of these will probably just wither away and die and dry up just because of like lack of moisture. I'm gonna do my best to try and keep the top layer a bit moist but you know, I'm just expecting some of these to not root in here and that's okay. You know, if some root then, you know, that, that'll be good if some can root and grow this way. And then the rest of these I'm gonna put on this side. You really can't even see any of these props because I've just buried, buried most of them under the soil. So yeah, I'm going to give this a water and then I will untangle the strings and hang this back in my window. And then the rest of these that I have, I will show you guys how I propagate using the butterfly method. So I just have a little tray here. This is just some like moist and sphagnum moss. It's not like super soaking wet and it's kind of nice and fluffy. That's the consistency that you want. 
And any kind of container that you want to propagate in is totally fine. This is just a recycled food container. And I'll just like loosely cover with saran wrap and I'm gonna sit this in my window so it can receive some bright light. So to do the butterfly method, all you have to do, so that's your node right here. It's usually like that's the node and that's the two um, leaves. So this is like extra, you don't need that. You can cut that away and then you can cut here so that all you're left with is just a piece like this. And so the reason why it's a butterfly method because these are the wings. <laughs> and so you just like stick this down in the moss, just like this. And so when you put this in here, you're just gonna bury that little node in the moss and just sit it like right on top. But you just wanna make sure, you know, that that node part is kind of down in the moss like that. And they'll eventually form their own little tubers and root and then the new growth will shoot up out of that node and then you can pot them into soil. Yeah, so you really honestly can do however many you want. And you don't have to let the roots get super long. It's important when you transfer them to soil that you keep that top layer pretty moist, you know, so that these don't dry out because if the roots do dry out, then they'll just kind of wither away and die. These tiny ones are gonna have a little bit of a harder time. So it's best to use hearts that are a little bit bigger because they're going to, I feel like, root and grow a little bit easier. Okay, so I think that's all I'm going to do. The rest of these hearts are getting kind of small. I might do and add a few more in here, but I don't wanna like waste all these strings. So I don't know, maybe I'll just add some into like a pot of soil and then you'll just kind of loosely cover. You want some kind of airflow, so don't make it like too tight and you just set this in a bright spot. And I usually will do this in my window. Should notice some roots starting to form. I would say usually in like, you know, three to four weeks is a good amount of time. My string of hearts is very, very short now. I did untangle it all as you can see. And I tried to make it somewhat even here. I could probably cut another like node off of these two, which I may end up doing just to make it a little bit more even. It's pretty sparse on top, but again, I did like put all those extra nodes like in the soil up top. It will eventually grow out as you can see and you know, trail down the pot as well. And it looks a lot better, even though I did cut so much off. I mean, I literally had this thing looped like all the way around here three times, but it's okay, string of hearts do, they do grow pretty fast and it won't take any time at all before these strands to start growing again. So I'll probably eventually have to like loop it back up. I don't wanna hang it too high because it's important that the sun hits the top of the pot, you know, in order for the top of the pot to get sunlight. Like my turtles here, you can see it's grown so much because sun hits the top of it. And so it's gonna continue pushing out new growth and trailing down. And same thing with my string of pearls. And it's grown so, so, so much since I did that repotting video. It is getting so full on top. So I am just letting it grow like crazy. It is just gonna be beautiful one day. Yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this little <laughs> propagation session and hopefully all the ones that are in there will start growing, all the ones I added in there. And yeah, I'll be sure to link my string of pearls and my string of turtles repot that I did down below in the description as well. If you have not seen those, I pretty much did the same thing and repotted them the same way. I really do love this Soul Soils mix and I will link their website down below. And if you want to try it out, I do have a code so you can save a little bit of a discount with them. I think it's a great mix. And honestly, I'm really excited to just see how these hearts grow for me. So thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you all again very soon.